Hi Power Appers, my name is Robin and today I'm finally back with some new SVG content. I'm going to show you something truly amazing today. In the past I showed you how you can change SVGs in Power Apps images when you click on something in your Power App, like you select a state in this combo box and then the map changes a little bit and then you can go even deeper and select my hometown of Sindelfing. But now everybody asks, can I do it the other way around? I don't want to select some combo boxes or galleries in the app. I want to click directly on the SVG image. With the help of the Power Apps component framework and a custom component, I achieved exactly this. So let's take a look. Start again, we select the state and then we go deeper and then select my hometown of Zindelfing, which I think is a much nicer user experience than the first variant. After the intro, we're gonna find out how this component works and how we set it up in your Power App. So first of all, this video is going to have three parts. If you don't want to watch all of them, I added some timestamps and you can jump directly to the part that interests you. So first of all, I'm going to show you where you can find the Power Apps component, what you need to change in your environment, in the admin center and how to add it to your Power App. In the second part, I want to show you how you need to set up the SVG code so that it works with my component and I will show you the examples you see uh, behind me and give you some ideas what you can do with this component. And in the third part we want to look in the source code of the Power Apps component which consists of uh, some JavaScript TypeScript code. This will be on a very beginner friendly level because I'm no JavaScript or TypeScript expert and gives you some ideas how this component looks behind the scenes. First of all, I'm going to show you where you find the component and how we're going to set up our Power Apps environment in the, in the admin center. You go over to my GitHub repository. The link is up here or down in the description. Then we select uh, the component, which is called select SVG. Gonna click on the folder and then download the solution file. And there is a msf file and a zip file for the solution. And we're gonna download the, the zip file, which also contains the msf which installs automatically in your environment. Next, we're gonna uh, head to the admin center. So words of warning, you're gonna need to be a Power Platform admin to, to change the settings. Or of course, you're gonna need to ask your Power Platform admin to do it for you in the environment you want to install this uh, component to. So we're gonna head over to the admin center and then we select the environment we want to change on the three dots and then head to settings. And then we click on the product and on features. And down here, you see the Power Apps component framework for Canvas apps. And this option here needs to be turned on so that you can use this component. So we head back to make.powerapps.com. Then we click on the last selection right here. We go to solutions and then we hit import. And uh, afterwards you select the zip file that we just downloaded. So afterwards this select SVG solution should pop up. It takes a few seconds to import. And in here you can see there are two things inside. First, there is this custom control. This is the component. And then we see the Canvas app and the examples we're gonna look at are inside of this app. And now you're already set up. And if you head to your apps, there should actually automatically be this select SVG demo installed. So next on our list is that we want to use the component in a new app. So we just create a new Canvas app and then we want to insert a custom component. 
we're gonna select import component right here. Then we're gonna switch from the canvas tab to the code tab. And then you can see all the components that are in your environment through the solutions. And then we're gonna select the select SVG component and we hit import and then nothing happens at first, but we need to do one more thing. We need to hit um, the insert menu right here. And then there popped up the code components, which wasn't there before. And here we can actually insert our component. And then we have an empty component right here. Uh, which shows nothing because there's no SVG inside. Sadly, there is no way to put uh, default values in here to just show some SVG code, put some default values in the properties. So I'm going to show you what you need to um, put in here right now. I have some SVG source code prepared for you that you can put in here. Again, it's the map of uh, Germany. going to copy the whole thing and gonna put it in the SVG code right here. And now it's in here and we still see nothing. So we need to make some more adjustments right here at the properties. The use fill is an option where it asks you if you want to override the fill properties of your SVG objects. Um, I'm gonna show you the difference a little bit later. I'm gonna select a yes right now. And here we're going to use for the normal object, we're going to use a light gray. And for the selected ones, we use a green. Then this is the width and the height of the actual SVG image in here, um, which you can assign fixed values to. And now we can see the map as a 500 um, times 500 pixel image. And this happens when you put a fixed values in there. So I would advise you to always put in here self.width and in here self.height. So it is always the same size as your component. And now when I resize my component, I also resize my map. And then we have the selected uh, ID property in here, which is a, a property of the type bound. Um, and this means I get a value back from the component, but I can all also throw a value into the component. I can select a state, which uh, I'm going to select a Bion, which is Bavaria, it's the state in the southeast. And now it uses exactly the colors that I said it should use. Every selectable SVG object is a light gray and the state of Bavaria is now green because it's selected. I can change this to salmon and now it has this color. And I could also use a darker gray but I can also say I don't want to use the fill property at all. And now everything is green because in the SVG code, it says that every object is uh, in this green tone. So we're going to talk later about uh, some cases where you want to override and other cases where you probably don't want to override the colors. So let's take a closer look at the SVG code. This SVG consists of 16 paths, which are the 16 states of Germany. And for this component to work, it is really important that everything that you want to select has a class and an idea. The class tells it uh, this is a selectable, selectable object. So I call the class a selectable object. You can also add another class, which is called hover effect, which uh, makes the hover effect, uh, which takes the opacity to 0 0.7. You can, you don't have to use this. If I delete this class of selectable 
object and we go back to say yes we want to replace the fill colors then we see this is the state of Thüringen because it hasn't the class of selectable object anymore this object is not manip manipulated by the component this cannot be selected and the fill color is not overridden by this uh, gray Everything that you want to be selectable needs to have the class of selectable object. And then it gives you back the ID of this object. So in this case, it would be Thüringen. So on a, another state, let's try the hover effect class and see what this looks like. And then we're gonna put a label in here and this is called select svg1 so we can get the output property by the name of this component and then selected id and because we put the value bayern in here it puts out bayern and if we want to test it we need to publish the component and open the app because it doesn't work in the editor so we're gonna save and publish our app so when we open up the app bavaria is selected is pre-selected because we told the component so in the selected id property we can leave this empty then nothing is selected or we can put a variable in there but um, if we click on something else, it's overridden. Like if you click on Schleswig-Holstein, that was the state that we um, put the hover effect on. Then it selects Schleswig-Holstein and this is my home state. We didn't put the class hover effect on here, so this doesn't have a hover effect. And if we click on here, then it says Baden-Württemberg and so on and so on. So let's dive deeper into how the component works and what you can do with it with the demo app. So welcome to part two of this video. We're going to look into the demo app and we're going to look how this looks like in the finished product. And then we're going to look uh, for each example into the source code. And I'm going to quickly tell you how I set it up. So the first example is the icon example. I uh, put these icons together in PowerPoint and then I selected all of them, yeah, saved them as an SVG image, got into the SVG source code. I'm going to show you in a second and just edit the selectable object classes everywhere and put the IDs of Apple, dinosaur, binocular and alien um, onto the SVG paths. And this is the finished product. And I want to show you really quickly that also animations work and animations are selectable. So let's take a look into the source code, my uh, SVG code. I actually deleted some parts of the source code, like the um, whole devs and more, because they uh, weren't really necessary. And, uh, and now I am left with, uh, with this right here. The, the four paths are inside of groups. So on the group tags, I put the ID, um, this is my alien, and I put uh, on there the selectable object class. Then I also put the animation in here. This is just this part, which is just here when you toggle the animation. So again, what is important that you have the ID in here, which generates the the output of the component and that you have the class in here of a selectable object which tells the component this object is selectable you can put it either on the path or on a group that can consist of more than one path or other svg object like uh, rectangles or circles we use the fill colors which i set to light gray and green Again, we put the width to self.width and the height to self.height. And we put in here a variable which we can set through these buttons. So this way works. 
the other way and doesn't work in the editor, I can't click them in here. And how this component uh, works is that when the variable in here changes, it overrides it this way into the SVG component. And if it's set by the component, then um, yeah, it gets overridden. The variable gets overridden with the ID that you clicked on here. And now we're gonna take a quick look at the fill property. And here we're gonna have the, this one is called PCF icons. And then we have the selected ID property. And in the if statement, there's not this var icon that we're gonna set with this button, but the output of this property. And if this is the, the, the text on the button, then it's green, otherwise it's light gray. So as you see, it works in both directions. And this is probably my tip because you can't click on here in the editor. You um, probably yeah, should work with a variable that you kind of simulate the, the clicking on here with buttons or a gallery. So let's take a look at our second example, more or less the same. So we just take a really quick look um, in, the, in the published version. We have six parts we can select right here and we can select it through, this is a gallery, uh, through the gallery in the Power App, or we can click on the, uh, on the component right here, and then it puts this into the selected ID, and again, highlights this. So I'm gonna look back uh, into the source code. The SVG is a little bit more complicated, and the SVG code is a little bit longer, but in the gallery, we, we have yeah more or less the, the same thing. Here's the circle, and this has a fill property. And the fill property is set when the selected ID is the same as the entry of the gallery. So let's head to the next example. And you can't click on anything in here. But I just wanted to show that, um, yeah, what I think is amazing uh, that the hover effects work that um, are implemented through a CSS file in the component. I'm gonna show you in the, in the third part of this video. So you can't click on, on anything, but the tooltips work and the, the hover effect works. So probably you want this kind of functionality in your app, so you just, don't use the selectable objects classes. I really quickly show you how to set up the tooltip and want to talk really quickly about why the um, SVG source code is so short in here. I'm gonna link you a, a video up here is uh, the first video in my fun with SVGs uh, series. You should probably check this out for the um, rest of the examples because um, we're gonna save the, the coordinates that are used in the path in a um, table of some sort. I used an Excel file that I included into this app. You can see it right here. This is uh, the table states. And yeah, we're gonna use the a very powerful concat command and use the circumstance that for Power Apps, this whole thing is just a just a long, long string. With the concat command, we're gonna create 16 paths, one for every state. And from here on, it's really easy to set up classes and more. We're gonna use that in the, in the next examples. The tooltip comes with this title. So inside of the path, don't close the path here. So you can directly close the path like this. Don't close it right here. Put a title in there with the name, which is the name of the state, and then close the path afterwards. And this repeats 16 times, one time for every um, row in the table. I'm gonna show you the table really quickly. So these are my 16 states right here. And these are the path of every state you see. This is a really yeah a long property. So this is for for every point. So this is the first point. Then the path goes to the to the next point, 
x and y goes to the next point to the next point. Really easy to read, but uh, yeah, really, really long. Have some more information right here we don't use at the moment. This is already included in the app. You uh, don't have to worry about the uh, data. And if you want to make this selectable, we just add the class of selectable object right here. Now we see the use fill is on yes and it is um, actually used. So when we publish the app now, the states would be selectable and on PCF map Germany dot selected ID would output the selected state. But in this example, I just wanted to show you the hover effect and the title. So we go to our next example. So let's have a look at the published app at first. You can select every state right here. And now we can choose in here if you if we want this state to be selectable. So for example, when we take out Baden-Württemberg and Bayern, Bavaria, not selectable and it can't be clicked. And you see the mouse doesn't change right here and you can click on it. We can click on everything else. We can yeah, gray out as many states as we want and take a look at the SVG code. Um, just as short as the other one. The gallery uh, in here, of course, is the, the Excel file again. And in here, we all don't use uh, directly use the Excel table. We use the, the gallery right here um, because we want to have access on this checkbox. We, we just say if the checkbox is selected so that it is selectable, then it will has the class selectable object and hover effect. and when it's not selected, then this part of the string just isn't there. So it won't have the classes. And because of that, it's not selectable at all. And down here, we put in the title again. And if the checkbox is selected, then we just put the name in here. If it's not selected, we put the name and not selectable afterwards. Now we're going to take a look at the last example, which is the most complicated one. Um, but yeah, you can learn a few things, but, but we won't go too much into detail. Uh, you can uh, look yourself in the source code. I just give you a basic idea how it works. I'm going to select a state and then the map zooms in to the state and then I can select a Landkreis. It's called it's probably a county in, in the US. And then I can select uh, cities in here, cities and towns in here. And then they're going to put into a collection. Uh, go to a neighboring county and select even more. And then I can deselect them if I want to. So again, uh, let's take a look at the source code. We're going to have again, like at uh, the icons and the uh, technical drawing. We're going to have a two-way selection. Either I'm going to use the combo boxes in here or I'm going to click on the app directly. It does A, change the view box of the SVG. So we see a different part of the SVG and then it starts to display the next level. So if we are in the state level, it uh, displays the state and the counties, the Landkreise in, in German. And if we go one level deeper, it also shows the lines of the cities. Because I don't want to put in the same code twice, I have this refresh button who does exactly this. It looks which level we are in and then does the according thing. And then we are gonna display all states except for the selected state. And if we are in the next level, in the second or third level, we are going to show the, the counties or the Landkreise in Germany. And when we are in the third level, yeah, we're going to show the, the cities and towns in Germany. It's called Gemeinden. And we're going to also show the selected Gemeinden in green. And we're going to trigger this button when we change something in here. So here on the on change property, we're going to select this button um, when we are on here on the on change property. Um, we're going to select this button and do some more. 
and on here the same thing on change we're gonna select this button and here the same thing on change we're gonna select the button I won't go into detail much more right here. If you have any questions or things that you can't uh, figure out while looking through the app, just put your questions um, in, the, in the YouTube comments. For the last thing of part two, we will set up a map of all 50 US states so we can use them with this component. So we're gonna add a new screen. We're gonna add the component. We're going to put in the SVG property last. We're going to say a use fill, a yes. Fill is light gray. Again, the selected fill, we're going to use blue right here. And again, put SVG width to self.width and height to self. Right. Uh, of course, I, I tested this, but it really worked on first try. So we're going to find a SVG of United States map. Um, I think I selected this one. I'm going to download the map of the USA. It looks like, like this. We're gonna open the file in your favorite editor. I'm gonna use Notepad for that. And here we see the SVG code with all our states. And the really nice thing is that the states, they already have an ID. So we just need to add the class of a selectable object. And what we're gonna do right now uh, at first is we're gonna replace a double quotes with single quotes which works a little bit easier in uh, in power apps because uh, double quotes are the text qualifier and then we go to the state of alabama and we put right here the class of selectable object We're gonna copy our whole svg code and this should already work in our component gonna put it inside the SVG. And as we can see, everything is black except for the state of Alabama, which has the class of selectable object and the fill property now gets overridden. And um, this is a light gray now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for this string right here. And we're gonna put in the class selectable object Oh, I missed the, the ending single quote. That's why the other state, I think it was Arkansas, didn't show up. So we're gonna replace um, this with this right now. And now you can see um, this was re replaced by this and now we have the selectable object everywhere. We can delete it right here. And now we're gonna take the whole thing again, put it in the SVG. And we have a whole selectable US map right now. And we're gonna test the select property, a label in here. We're gonna say select svg one dot selected id and right now there's nothing in here we're gonna change the selected id property in here to us ca which should be california and now california is selected in our published app we can click on every state and the component outputs the ID that is in the SVG code. This was part two of the video, which should have given you uh, lots of ideas of what you can do with this component. It works really, really well with, with maps, I think, but you can also use it for different stuff.
So here we are at part three of the video. I really appreciate that you are still here. If you ever want to change something on this component and are not familiar with how you program custom components, then I give you a really quick overview um, of the different files involved and give you a really brief look at the code, which uh, actually isn't too long. Yeah, you probably get a better feeling for how this uh, thing works and why it works this way. In the description, I give you some links uh, for tutorials where you can uh, create your first custom component where it uh, shows you exactly how to set up your Visual Studio, what extensions you need to install and so on and so on. So um, I'm going to not bother you with that. We're going to directly look into the files um, that are involved. The first file that you need to set up the right way is the con control manifest input dot XML. And there you're going to define all the properties that are set uh, in the editor. The first one, this is the SVG code where we put in the SVG code. Um, this is of type multiple, so multiple lines of uh, text. And it's an input property that is required. Otherwise, this makes no sense. The next property is the use fill property. Um, if you want to use the fill colors, yes or no. There is no bool property where you can put in true or false or um, yeah, select it with a toggle. So I yeah, had to use a single line of text. The next two are the colors, which are also a single line of text. Then we have the width and height in here, which you need to um, input. And these are whole numbers. And then we have the last property, which is not a type of input, but like all the others here, it's of the type of bound, which you saw you can put something in, but it also puts something out. And here we say we're going to use the index.ts file as our code file. And the much shorter one is the style CSS. We're going to take a look at first. Because we're going to say we have a class of hover effect hover. So when we hover over an object that has the class hover effect, then we're going to change the opacity to 0 0.75, so to 75%. So it appears a little lighter than before. Then on every selectable object, so every object with the class selectable object, we're going to change the cursor to a pointer. So as you saw, there gets comes this little um, hand icon, which is called pointer in here. And this just sizes the, the SVG and the SVG container to 100%. Um, so let's take a look at the code and we're going to uh, define a few variables in here. The variable value is where we put the selected ID in later on. And then we're going to have some essential functions in here. The first one is the init function. This happens um, when you first load your app. So this happens uh, typically only once when the, when the component is loaded first. And what we're going to do is we're going to create um, two divs, a main container and a SVG container. Then the, the second essential function where it happens a lot more is the update view. Update view function is called every time when an input value is changed or an output value changes. And what happens in here? It sets the correct um, height and width that we get from the, from the properties um, in here. And then we actually put the SVG content in here. And right here we check if um, the use fill is set to yes or to no. If it's not at no, then everything else will be a yes. And then we're going to read the, the fill color and the selected fill color. And then we're going to loop through all the SVG elements that have the class selectable object. You find this in here. And then we have the, the one object with the ID of the selected value. And we're going to, and if we want to use the, want to override the fill colors, 
then we put the selected fill color in here and to all the other objects we um, put the the normal fill color in here and then we do one uh, very important thing we're gonna add an event listener this puts a function on on every svg object with the class selectable object this is still in the loop right here and it listens to if someone clicks on that object uh, we're gonna bind the function on element click on this we're gonna reset the fill color and then we're gonna get what's in the um, id attribute of the of the clicked element we're gonna write it in the value variable and then we notify the app that the output changed. The notify output changed function is uh, really, really simple. It does nothing special. It just tells Power Apps something changed. This triggers two things. This makes Power Apps call the get output function in here and um, also calls again the update view function. So when we click on an SVG object with the, with the class selectable object, then in here the colors change back and the color of the selected object change, changes to the um, fill selected color. And then we alert Power Apps something changed. Power Apps calls back, um, calls the get outputs function. We're going to return the value to selected ID. And then Power Apps also calls the update view function again, and everything starts again. So this is not called again. This is only called once, as I said, but then we're going to start from the update view function again. This is everything the code does. Uh, as you saw, this only has about 200 lines, which is not um, too much. And you can probably do some, some minor changes if you want to change the component for your uh, purposes. Thanks for watching the video and I hope you can put this component to good use. If you have any questions or have good ideas for features that um, you should add to this component, please leave a comment under the video. And if you have a really, really cool use case, please also leave a quick comment. I'm really interested what you will gonna do with, with this component and how you gonna use it. I would really like to know how you put this component to good use in your Power Apps. I actually have a second version of this component planned and it uh, really works pretty well um, where you can drag around SVG objects and yeah, can do some cool things with that functionality. But this will have to wait a few weeks more. If you don't want to miss it, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.